Okay. I'm Amy Weintraub, and I, you may know me from, this, from my yoga work. Uh, I wrote a book called Yoga for Depression, and that was the first book on yoga and depression and yoga and mental health. Uh, that was in 2004, and I had actually written an article for Yoga Journal in 1999 called Yoga the Natural Prozac, and things just organically flowed from that. But I did that, and my passion was to write and teach about yoga and mental health because of my own journey. And I um, realized that yoga was a lifesaver for me. Prior to practicing yoga, I had been on antidepressants and functioning, semi-functioning. I mean, there would be times when I wasn't functioning very well when I couldn't stack chairs or put two shoes in a shoebox or do the kinds of things that take um, just sort of cognitive presence. I was in a fog. I felt as though there were, there were like clouds on my brain. I couldn't think clearly. I couldn't find words um, to express. So, and it showed up as a kind of numbness. Uh, not a lot of grief, but just no feelings, a dead feeling inside. Uh, so uh, I was on antidepressants. At, I functioned fairly well on antidepressants, but there was no joy in my life. There was no grief in my life either. I was just pff, numb, going through the motions of life. And uh, I went to my first yoga experience at Kripalu Center in 1980. 89 and just loved it. I'd meditated for years. I had practiced yoga a little bit with Richard Hittleman records and books, and but I, I hadn't really done a regular yoga practice. But once I began, it really made such a difference in my life. Um, and and I became really excited about it and wanted to share it. I, when I went to do my yoga teacher training, it was really only for me to deepen my own experience. But when I finished, it was like I was hot to share it, hot to bring it out into the world because it had so um, transformed my own experience of what life could be. I could feel joy. And little by little, I was able to titrate off medication and, and experience life uh, more fully uh, in, in the present moment without... Because what yoga does for me is it gives me a way of becoming the observer. Not that I don't feel my own feelings, but I'm also an observant observer of my feelings. So I'm less reactive. I don't, you know, I don't... Um, the, 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 the traumas and losses and betrayals and depressions and the griefs and the shames that we all experience. We all experience them. There's no way to protect ourselves from those. I still have those in my life, but I don't react to them. I'm just sort of allow, allow. And, oh, wow, grief is visiting now. You know, I'm really, and what does, you know, what's grief have to tell me? You know, maybe even do a little dialogue with the grief. Or, wow, I just felt a sense of shame. I haven't had shame in so many years. What's that about? Wow, talking to that shame part. That's, you know, it's, I, I think it's, you know, I, I believe in psychotherapy, and I've had doses of it throughout the years. Uh, so that's, of course, been uh, a factor. And, and I've also studied internal family systems therapy, which also, which is so aligned with yogic philosophy because what it does is says, come into, find self, find that sense of observing mind from a place of compassion. And then you, as the client or the patient, dialogue with that four-year-old that was wounded or that infant that didn't get what it needed, or that 14-year-old. It's a very yogic way of working with uh, the mind. Um, and so those experiences of yoga and internal family systems uh, training have really helped me be able to be in a place of self 
when, when life hits, you know, so it's like, okay, life, come and hit me. Let me know I'm alive. I can feel and I don't have to be rocked. You know, life can hit me and I'm going to sway. I'm going to be buffeted by life when it hits, but it's not going to knock me over because I'm, I clear my space every day with my practice. So that's what yoga does for me. And I really have seen, because I've worked with really thousands of people, I've seen that it does the same for them too. And for people with mood disorders especially, it gives them the tools to be able to manage their moods so that they don't have to make a phone call to the therapist, I'm out of control here. They can try something else, something they've learned. Nobody else has to do it to them. Nobody else has to, I think some people are going to need medication no matter what, but it's a tool that you can have, that you can self-regulate. Okay, I'm out of control here. What did, what did I learn? Okay, I can do a, a sound and a mudra that's going to just calm me down. I can do place my right hand on my heart and my left hand on top. I can take little sniffs of breath because if I try to take a deep breath, I'm not going to be able to do it because I'm in a panic, right? So I can take little sniffs of breath that's going to match, meet my mood. So let's try that. That we can do. And then I'm just going to let it out. Because I have to, because it's so much breath in there. I have to let it out, all right? But, you know, if I said, if I said, oh, just take a deep breath, you're going to say, what? I can't take a deep breath. You know, I'm in a panic. What is this? Take a deep breath. Forget about it. But if I say, let's take little, let's just take little, (laughs) that's what you're already doing. You know, you're already hyperventilating. So let's take these little, And then, what are you going to do? You have to let it out. And do you know what's happening when you let it out that way? You're stimulating the parasympathetic nervous system, which is calming you down, calming heart rate, calming breath. You feel a whole shift in your energy. So why are my hands like this? Because it's soothing and calming. There are more nerve endings in the fingers than most other parts of the body. So when we do these hand gestures, we're actually stimulating different areas of the brain. So now we're going to do something. We're just going to add a sound. So this is going to be weird, okay? This is going to be weird. You're not going to, it's going to say, ah, is this a sound? We're going to add a sound. I'm going to add this sound, yum, okay? Like yum, yum, you know? Um, but we're going to do, we're going to extend the Y really long, like a And we're going to go right to the M. Because what that does, and you don't have to believe it, just try it, see what happens. You don't have to believe it. It vibrates the heart, and, it, and the mmm sound is really soothing. So let's say you're in that panic, and you can do the little sniffs of breath. Let's, let's say you're in a grocery store, so you don't want to stand there with your hands on your heart. Just doing the little sniffs of breath. You can do that in the grocery store. Nobody's going to know the difference. I have stood in Trader Joe's in the produce aisle doing the sound with Yum. Because somebody called me, uh, someone I was working with who was in a panic and could hardly take a breath, telling me a story. And I said, let's just do a few Yums. She knew what I was talking about because we've done it together. So I'm standing in Trader Joe's with a cell phone with my right hand on my heart because my left hand's holding my cell phone. So let's just, let's just try it. I mean, what do you have to lose? Hands on your heart, little sniffs of breath. And yum. Now you probably kept your eyes open, because I did too. And if you're comfortable, let's try it again with eyes closed. And then if 
it's comfortable, just let your eyes remain closed for a moment. And just sense if there's a quieter place that you're living in, maybe a sense of quietness around you. Quiet, a little, the still point of the turning world is a, a line from a T.S. Eliot poem. Maybe you're aware of that, maybe not. And then as you're ready, if the eyes are still closed, allow them to open. <sighs> so how do you feel? Do you feel a shift? Maybe, maybe not. That's just one of hundreds of tools that you can use to self-regulate. You don't have to be a victim of your mood. You don't have to be a victim of your story. You can do a two-minute practice and take yourself out of that story, that mood. I'm Amy Weintraub. Come visit me at yogafordepression.com, amyweintraub.com. Let's connect. Thank you.